the clock is ticking and the future of humanity is at risk. I'm not reading the script of a sci-fi movie, this is reality. Doomsday is looming large in the near future. But how will all of this unfold? Who will be responsible for the demise of humans? If you think it's going to be aliens, then let me tell you, for now we can leave them out of the picture because our own humanity is at risk from something that we created ourselves. Our report has further daunting details. Take a look. 90 seconds to midnight. The end of humanity is here. Our very own existence is at threat. Well, we are not predicting a doomsday-like event. But the world is staring at a clear and present danger. Experts have been raising alarms. This potential human opponent is formless, more omnipresent and has no limit to the opportunities as well as potential dangers it presents. We are talking about artificial intelligence. For a long time now, sci-fi movies have made us believe that the rise of AI will lead to the destruction of humanity. And now alarm over artificial intelligence has reached a fever pitch in recent months. Artificial intelligence could threaten humanity. There is a possibility that it can go rogue. The latest warning comes from British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's tech advisor. Matt Clifford claims that AI can effectively create a new species, one that is greater than humans and far more intelligent. It could be used to create new recipes for bioweapons or to launch large-scale cyber attacks. AI could outsmart humans and take control, and it puts them at a risk of extinction. UK Prime Minister's advisor's warnings are the latest addition to a long list. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think that could happen in a lot of different ways. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Geoffrey Hinton, touted as one of the godfathers of AI, was compelled to quit Google after 10 years at the firm. The reason? His dire need to publicly address the risk of AI and the potential threat it poses to humans. So if you're a skilled manipulator, and these things will be extremely skilled manipulators because they'll have learned from all the manipulations people ever did, so they'll be much better than a person at manipulating us, they'll be able to manipulate us into doing whatever they want. It'll be like you manipulating a two-year-old. So they don't need to pull levers or press buttons. The idea of air gapping them and everything will be okay isn't going to work. But is the public frenzy around the dangers of AI legitimate? Or are we being overtly cautious about facets of technology we seemingly know nothing about yet? Growing public concern over the dangers of AI might not be exaggerated. But it is this fear that can help stakeholders ensure that technology is made safer to use. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. All right, to discuss this further, our guest, Professor Nick Bostrom, who is a director at Future of Humanity Institute, University of Oxford, joins us live. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. Professor, the very makers of AI, like Jeffrey Hinton, are now distancing themselves from it and warning the world against it. Is it just a matter of time now before AI develops a conscience independent of humans? Well, things have certainly been moving very rapidly over the last few years. I think for a long time it has been clear that this is the goal towards which um, the field of artificial intelligence has been striving. Um, but with these current large transformer models, we, we see with chat GPT, etc., the pieces are starting to fall into place. And so it does look like if we continue to push on this, there is a significant chance that we will attain the same kind of general intelligence that, that we humans have within possibly a single number of years. So when you say general intelligence, does it also have intent behind it that it can develop an intent or it can develop it can develop vengeance behind it, it can develop any kind of feeling of revenge or any kind of feeling of an attack. Can it develop those kind of emotions, if you would like to call it that? 
Um, well, I think that's not necessary in order for it to be a potential danger. Um, already the raw GPT-4 model that lies behind ChatGPT um, in its original form was quite happy to assist users with questions like how can I design a more toxic poison gas or how can I make a biological agent or how can I hack into computers? How can I do a school shooting more efficiently? Um, so these capabilities lie latent in the model and OpenAI and Microsoft have tried their best to align them so that the current version that facing the consumer it, like refuses those kinds of questions. But sometimes people get around those and there is a question of the next generation models that will be even more powerful and even more able to assist with such requests. So that's like one category of danger that certainly doesn't require the AI itself to have any goals. But it's also true that many people are working on, on giving these AI systems the additional ability to do long-term planning and more goal-seeking behavior. And in those situations, it's also possible that these AIs themselves might be dangerous if they are pursuing goals that are at odds with, with human values and human interests. Professor, dependence on AI has been increasing. Are there methods to curb it at this stage itself? Like you spoke about, you know, it can make long-term plans and those kind of searches that people are doing, which is going to compel chat GPT to give those kind of results. Is there anything that can be done at this stage to stop it right here or is it inevitable? Well, I think uh, the, the, the path to really great futures for humanity, I think at some point leads through this portal of machine superintelligence. So I don't think we should try to stop it uh, indefinitely. Uh, I, th I think we will have to make this transition. However, uh, we should be really careful when we do this and it might be helpful uh, for leading developers to have the option when, when they get to the point where they have maybe human level AI and then have some idea of how to make it super intelligent rather than just cranking up all the knobs to the max immediately and going full throttle, it might be very important at that stage to be able to take it a little bit slow, uh, to to pause for maybe you know a few months or a year or so to, to really make sure that all the, the safety mechanisms are, are implemented as best we can. Um, right. There are strong drivers behind AI, like the, the scientific interest, there's like huge medical applications, economic applications, military strategic applications. It could be a hugely beneficial technology, but we really got to make sure that we don't do it recklessly, but that, that we sort of ap approach this with, with a huge sense of responsibility. The sense of responsibility towards the approach is what is going to make the difference. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. That was Professor Nick joining us from Switzerland.